the coxswain in a boat race crew is probably more important in that seat than they are anywhere else in the rowing world. You know, coxing's a difficult job at the best of times. When you've got to get from start to finish for, you know, five or six minutes, when you've got a boat race, there's a huge amount going on. How you steer, how you motivate your crew, how you antagonise or otherwise with the umpire. You know, they know that a bad 20 or 30 seconds in the coxing seat and you're going to lose your crew the race. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a lot of pressure on them. The coxes can actually have a really big impact. In the boat race, you've not just got what calls you're making, you've also got big tactical decisions based on the way the river turns. At different points of the course, you'll either be defending on the outside of a bend or you'll be attacking on the inside. It's usually on one of those bends that the race is decided when one crew puts a push in. So the cox has got to recognise when they're either under pressure or when they've got the opportunity to win, they've got to make that call. And there's the steering itself, which is probably, for the cox, the single hardest thing. Steering a four is a lot different from steering an eight. If I'm steering a four, you know, I'm sitting in the bow. On an eight, you're sitting right on top of the rudder. The bow is eight guys in front of you. When you're coxing an eight, you can't see what's directly in front of you. So it's basically like driving a car with a big sticker of a man right where you are heading. Why did the Titanic sink? <laughs> you know, they hit the iceberg even though they saw the iceberg, you know, however many kilometers before. Um, and as it's steering takes time, you, you do something now, but the boat's not gonna respond immediately. You have to be patient and you have to give the boat the three seconds to do what it's gonna do. And then think, okay, am I happy now? So you can see as I'm pulling the strings, the rudder is moving back and forward underneath. And the boat is about the same length as a bus. So we're steering something the length of a bus with something about that big. Come next to the cox box, which is my main unit in the boat. Switch that on here. This will give us the rate and this will give us a stroke counter. And then the microphone will come up. I usually stick it under my hat and then you can hear straight away that the uh, speakers are picking it up down the boat. I think part of coxing is a performance. We sort of help them develop a better feel and rhythm in the boat. So I've used my voice to try and make that rhythm. So I've said something like, you know, hold there. So it's like a long sounding stroke. And then if I want them to be a little bit more uh, upbeat with it, then I'll say something in a slightly shorter way. So I might say something like loose or move or something in a, in a sharper tone. So one of the things about coxing is it's not just what you say, it's actually more often the way you say it. It's usually when we get off the water and they stand up and I look up like this and I remember that they're much bigger than me, that I think, OK, yeah, actually, this is quite an odd situation. How has a small girl suddenly been put in charge of all these big guys? Yeah, I'm 5'1 and they're 6'3", so it's, it's a bit of a trick. I personally don't understand why people make such a big deal of the physical difference. I know that the contrast is very sharp, but that doesn't in any way affect how I relate to the guys. Maybe it's because being short, almost everybody that I deal with is taller than me. I suppose the strange thing is, why are they listening as well? Uh, why don't they just do what they want to do and ignore me? And I suppose the only reason is because they know that I know what I'm doing and I'm there to help them. I think psychologically, a coxswain needs to be just as as aggressive and, and focused as all of the athletes and that we're training in the same mindset just as a jockey would be, I think is a pretty good analogy of that. And you have to understand sport and you have to be competitive in order to really excel in this position. This time of year, there aren't that many perks to the job, especially when it's this cold outside. No, that's not true. Going fast on the water is a really great feeling. I think max speed is maybe 15, 16 miles an hour, but when you're in a boat, it feels like you're going very fast. And the, the blades go in the water, and the boat accelerates, and especially if you have a boat next to you, and you're, you're rowing through a boat, and you feel like you're going so fast. It's one of the most awesome feelings in coxing. I mean, you get to race, which is really fun, and that is by far the best part about coxing, is getting, for me, to the end of the season with guys that you know so well and you understand them and you have the same goal and you just trust each other enough that it's just going to happen. <laughs>